Hey y'all, happy, happy Friday. I came out here and just to sit on the lake and just kind of just enjoy myself with peace. I'm not really hungry right now, although I did stop to get me a salad. There's quite a few people out more than I thought, just kind of enjoying the nice weather. It's a little gloomy, but the weather is still like in the 70s. Anyway, just want to share this beautiful view with you today. Hey, y'all. I'm sitting out here in my car on the lake. I'm not getting out of the car. I'm just sitting here kind of enjoying the weather and watching people watching. Watching the people walking. I done got mesmerized by this guy fishing. Lord knows I don't, you know, I'm not a fisher person myself, but hey. <laughs> it's nice. It seems to be peaceful, I guess. But you know, I told y'all I went fishing one time and um, I didn't catch nothing. So it's nothing I want to do in the future you know but anyway but if i was gonna do it it'll be like a day like today i don't know how people go out in the heat of the summer and and fish but i guess if they really enjoy it but y'all i was kind of just wanting to chat with you today and this is not about a bunch of nothing i'm sure that if y'all are any type of read any type of news or on social media you know about the um uh Kim, what, the Kardashian and Kanye's drama and divorce saga. Well, ironically enough, um, I guess the interviewer asked D.L. Hughley something specific in regards to, he said it was funny. And D.L. Hughley commentary was it was not funny. You know, that uh, Kanye was really a stalker, right? So apparently... I guess Kanye heard of whatever DL had to say in regards to he and Kim's, you know, marital situation. And, you know, uh, DL was speaking on the fact that if it was his daughter, you know. So, of course, Kanye published this man's address and said he was going to send his goons after him. And, um, which, is, which in, in turn, you know, if people are not stable will actually put this man's in harm way in his family right and um so you know it's been back and forth you know commentary in regards to that and people have their own opinions of what they have to say it's not that i don't agree with some things like kanye is saying about his daughter being in social media and then on tiktok i don't think that's appropriate for young kids sometimes to be doing that but i guess you don't have to agree, but I think they should agree on some parenting things, and hopefully they come to terms with that. However, I do feel like, and he should, for the most part, I don't know if he does things for publicity's sake or what, but he should, for the most part, understand where they're coming from, especially her and even her mother you know she watched the whole situation with nicole brown which was her friend and the oj simpson saga and how that situation played out now i'm not a uh, judge or jury i can't say if oj did it or not he was found innocent of course i can't say if he did it or not no one deserves to die but in, given that situation where someone seems sane you know and the person ends up dying and you believe yourself that this was done at the hands of one of your friends that who seemed okay you know of course you're going to be concerned about i think i would be concerned about his threats and stuff to my boyfriend and all of that even if i didn't think he was you know would do it if, if even this hadn't happened in my life but if i know a situation where this has happened to someone i known and i and you're exhibiting um unstable behavior I most definitely wouldn't want to uh, trust, you know, that what you're saying is just jokes and all for kicks and giggles. You know, I'm looking at you sideways because I don't know. And then especially since he admittedly don't take his medication all the time. What I find odd is she seems to... Now, while Pete is taking his medication now... It just seems like you're in a pattern of being with men that are not stable mentally. And my question is this. I think she has jumped into something too fast. But of course, like I said, I don't have any 
meeting the skin in the game and it's none of my business their life i'm just commentary because i'm you know commentating because i see it in social media you're just like anybody else but why would you jump so quick into a relationship with someone just bam and it's like you're all happy and it's not even an age gap with them i could care less but it's just like Take a time to breathe. Get yourself healed. Focus on some other things. Focus on your children, your family, other things besides jumping into a new relationship and then wanting it to be out in public because you think it's so cute. That's another thing that's not all. I mean, it's just like neither one of them saying she's taking a high road because she's not talking about the father per se, but you're doing things that are not a good example for your children just jumping into the next relationship with the next dude even before you get divorced and people say well he did it he did it but two wrongs don't make a right and that's another thing you dating all these different women and now once your wife decides she wants a divorce now all of a sudden you want your marriage and your family well then you couldn't you have figured that out prior to you going out doing whatever you want to do it would be one thing if you took some time to reflect and get yourself together and you weren't dating this woman or that woman but you were dating and set yourself down until you figure out your marriage and say, let's get counsel or let's get help. You know, they're, they're, they seem to be dysfunctional, but that's people as a whole. And I think people look at celebrities as if they're something different. But they're normal people just like you have normal problems just like you. But my concern is, <clears throat> given the OJ situation, just giving people mental capacity uh, at all. I want to see him get some help. I do want to see him be in his children's life because I think they're his lifeline. I think he loves his kids for sure. I think they're his lifeline to just some type of sense of normalcy. So I hope that they can reach a normal kind of sense of um, co-parenting and coexisting. And they can both move on with their life. But again, I think they both just jump in with people. And that's the crutch of using people to to um support you emotionally and you have to have somebody around or in your life constantly that you don't know how to navigate life without you know without somebody and being in a relationship and i'm speaking on it because i had a talk with one of my friends on yesterday and she's like you know i just have been praying for god to release me from an individual that she's been with you know and how you have soul ties with an individual that you don't know. And that um, brings me to an adult topic that, you know, about uh, F buddies, if y'all know what that is, and friends with benefits, so to say. And I don't know if this is a new woman thing or what, but I don't think that, I don't care how you are as a woman, I don't think you can detach yourself emotionally from a person and just sleep with them. I don't think that that is something that is possible. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it is in this new generation or these millennials or whoever this generation is after the millennials. I don't know. That that's something that they can seem to do and be okay with. But I don't think, I think you open yourself up to soul ties with a person and eventually you're going to keep letting this person enter you as a woman and your feelings are going to get attached. I mean, how can you just distinguish, I mean, just to detach yourself from the act that you're doing with someone in such an intimate act and say, well, I don't have no feelings. We're just F buddies or we're just friends with benefits. And then when this person decides they want to move on, you are them. What are you, you there's no repercussions to whatever. I, I don't know. It just seems odd to me. To me, anyway. I don't think that I could do something like that. And so I was talking to one of my friends recently. This conversation is all over the place. Anyway, I was talking to one of my friends recently about... They were speaking to me about their wife, right? And they were speaking ill about their wife to me. You know, and I'm not going to say back in the day was a time I would entertain that conversation and try to get them to see the better way or whatever. But you know what? I said at that moment, I'm not a counselor. What I can do is pray for you. What I can't do is fix your situation you have with your wife. What you need to do is talk to her because that's the only person that can fix the relationship is you and her. 
And if you can't go in and seeking out another woman, especially a single woman advice, it's not the thing to do. Any other woman advice. What you need to do is kind of focus on your relationship. That's the only way it's going to heal. You know, I, I can't I can't help you with that, you know. And it's detrimental to me to get emotionally involved in your situation. All I can do is pray for you and wish you well, but I'm not here for your counseling session. And I don't know if that was being mean or whatever, but I think a lot of times if you stop it at the, cut it off at the, the whatever, the, the, the ankle or at the start, you cut it off. You won't allow yourself, and that's me and our women, to be entertaining a person of marriage, whether you have compassion for their situation or not. I see you can have compassion for them and have empathy for them, but what you need to do is pray for them. Because sometimes that empathy and compassion turns into something that you wouldn't intend. And after so many times, you start to go and you go there to the wrong place. And you end up in a situation that you shouldn't be in, in an affair or what have you, based on them crying on your shoulder about somebody else that they took vows with. And that's men and women. You know, I know that men can do that stuff, you know, and, and say they can detach their feelings, but I think sometimes men get their feelings involved just as well. So, you know, they always say man got an agenda, you know, he laying in the wait so he can actually sleep with you. But I think sometimes men's feelings do get involved just from listening to some of the things how you know, in their own head, they fantasize about this woman that they want. And they ended up, you know, ended up in a situation where they have their feelings involved in a situation. And I will tell y'all, if I still to this day say, if you are married, why are you concerning yourself with somebody single and what they got going on and what they're doing? That really don't come before you. You shouldn't be concerned, unless it's your daughter, you shouldn't be concerned about what a single woman is doing. Is this your son? You shouldn't be concerned about what a single man is doing. If you're married on a person, you need to be concerned with is your children or your or your spouse. If Joe Blow over there, you know I cuss if it's your family, your brother, you might want to sit him straight, but if it's Joe Blow over there doing something, that's Joe Blow and his business. You can say, Joe, you know you're doing the wrong thing, but I don't need you not you don't need to be in this man's business. Because if you focus on your relationship and your marriage, you don't have time to worry about what single people are doing. That's so that you be careful about the company you keep because, like I said, it leads to wrong things. Y'all may have a totally different opinion than what I'm saying. You know, you don't have to agree with what I'm saying. That's just my personal opinion, you know. But anyway, that's enough of that. And like I said, and I had to ask them, you know, one guy was telling me how he felt about me and I should have been his wife, right? Dude, that's so past and so long ago. But I'm not. And when you got married, I was single. So I couldn't have should have been your wife. <laughs> and I'm saying, and what I realized, and I think you realize this the older you get. If that's what you think of me, you want me to have kibbles and bits. While you're providing the meal and the home and everything else for this next person, this woman, that's a woman or a man. You must don't think very high of me. How can you say you love me? And you, because when you love somebody, you want them covered, you want them protected, you want them kept. You don't want, and you want to be a, a contributing factor to that, of that protection, that safety, and that trust you want to have that over them you don't want to have them wondering what well, one of you can i see him or can i you want to make sure that person is well all right i know that's what i want to do for the person i love i want to make sure they covered i want to make sure i'm with them i want to make sure we can roll together we can do if something go down i'm there and if i'm with somebody in a marriage or in a committed relationship of course i can't do that for the next person so if I really love that person, like I say, I'll proclaim and think that much of them, I want that for their life. And if that's the thing, if you don't want your daughter or your son to have somebody giving, giving kibbles and bits to them, why would you give kibbles and bits to somebody else? And you have to ask the person that's claiming this to you, well, if they have a son or daughter, do you want that for your son or daughter? And they'll probably say no 100% of the time if they're not trifling. Parents. And if they say no to that, then why are you asking, well, why do you want that for me? Why do you think I should take the bare minimum or the less? And then if 
you don't want it for your own son and daughter because things that I put up with and I look back now and I'm like, I don't want my daughter putting up with that. And I had to say, well, if I don't want that for her life, why do I want it for mine? Don't I think I deserve something I want for my child? Absolutely. And that's just a brief conversation on, I was watching this, um, you know, here I go with these TikToks, right? I was watching this TikTok and <laughs> the woman was going off. I guess it's something I'll out uh, call hashtag I'll take your man. And you know you could be married and somebody cannot really be committed to you and they cannot be yours. In your mind you think they are. And so she was putting the she she did put the lady on blast and she put the um husband as well. Apparently he was a minister. She put the lady on blast, right? on the thing and uh, say the lady had followed her Facebook page and blase blase and I, you know so she was like posting pictures of them and all of this on the on her page but one thing I can say and she was like she took my husband and she's happy about taking my husband this new thing I call hashtag I'll take him in and I know this may be hard to hear because if I was in that situation it's hard it's, it's hurtful that you go through this, but if somebody is truly yours and truly want to be committed to you, it ain't nobody can come in. Cause I look back on the relationships I was I was in, and I have not been unfaithful to my relationships. And because, and I don't care who it was, and you think men didn't flirt with me and want to be with me? I've had some of the men's meal I was with friends try me, but it's no thank you. Because I knew that I was really in a committed relationship and I loved them and wanted to be with them. So I'm like, if somebody truly is committed to you, they know how to say no to the next person. They know how to say no, I don't want you to the next individual. And that's what I'm saying. If you that weak, you don't put yourself in a tempting position. Because I can guarantee you, if you got a pitcher of Kool-Aid and you want it to be sweet, you need to put sugar in that Kool-Aid. Don't go over to the next person that's already has sweetened that Kool-Aid or getting the one with the sugar. It's what you make it. Put it in, put into your own pitcher of Kool-Aid. Put the sugar in your own pitcher, not somebody else's pitcher. And stop splitting it up. Because you sitting up here thinking about, oh, that grass is so green over there. I go over there and have fun. That's just like your your children, right? If you have like custody of your kids and you like the dad or the mom or whomever, get the child only on the weekend, you know. So when they with that parent, they thinking that's how the parent always is because the parent only has them for a short period of time, say a weekend a month. So of course, why they with them, they always doing something, always going, always having fun, right? And with they're with the the main parent, whether it's the mother or the father, that parent has to be a disciplinarian. They have to say no to a lot of things because of the budget, this and that and the third. You know, so they think that parent is the mean parent or whatever. So of course, you know, they always looking at the father or the mother, whoever they visit temporarily as the fun parent. You know, because they don't have to have structure or anything there. They just having fun doing activities when they go there. They don't realize the reality until what they think the honeymoon stage is until they have to go be with that person full time. And that's the same in like an affair type situation. Oh, it's all great. Y'all swinging on chandeliers, doing the do, having fun. She's this. She's always made up. She's always together. She's always too pretty. She doesn't have to worry about taking care of your kids, cleaning up behind you, washing your dirty drawers. You don't have to worry about being with her when she on her cycle, when she in the mood, when she don't want to work all day and got a headache and cussing you out. You you know, you she, they don't have to deal with the everyday thing. They don't have to deal with you on the good days or the bad days, the good times when you sick and whenever. That's on both sides. They just seeing all, it's all great, it's all wonderful, it's all fun. You know, so you know, they not dealing with the weeds in the yard that you have over here. They just dealing with the pure green lawn. So that's what I'm saying. If you want something good, take care of your own situation. Take care of your own lawn. Take care of your own relationship and realize you can have those good 
flowery, wonderful, swinging on the chandelier days too if you put the work in where you are. And that's on both sides. Anyway, I've been all over the place talking today and it started off talking about just them and their relationship and their marriage on social media, but that's just some of the things I saw. I want y'all to be encouraged and stay encouraged, you know, um, and like I said, you can go through the storm in any relationship you're in, teeth and tongue fall out. You know, it's just what type of storm are you willing to tolerate? You only, you know your tolerance level. I never tell anybody to leave their spouse or a relationship. Only you know your tolerance level, and, but I know that God wants something good for you. And I know that God will bless you in a relationship and in life to have somebody who's going to cherish, honor, and respect you and cover you. And I, that's on both sides. You know, he's not going to have you in a situation where you have to be in a relationship that somebody don't love, cover, and respect you. But it's not anybody else's job to make you happy. It's them to have actions to do that, to contribute to your happiness, but it's not their job to make you happy. You should be happy and joyful without them, just with God and you alone. And you just too much responsibility to put on other people for your happiness. But you don't want to contribute to somebody else that you say you love being miserable. Anyway, that's enough of my chatter, chatting, chatting. Oh, let me say this before I get off of here. Sharon, thank you so much for my lunch. I mean, well, my, well, I bought it for, for, I bought it. I bought me a salad from Zandy's. I'm not going to eat it for lunch, but I am going to have it for dinner because, like I said, I'm not hungry. It's late in the day. Let me see what time. I don't know what I do with my phone. Oh, it's in my purse, y'all. Let me see what time it is. It's 2.46. You know, I ate a sandwich right before I left the house, and I've been gone about an hour. I got he made me a turkey sandwich because I hadn't eaten. But anyway, thank y'all for joining me as always with my chitter chatter and jibber jabber. I want you to know you're loved. I love you, but God truly loves you the most. Remember to always be kind to yourself and others. Be joyful and be blessed. Love you. Bye.